3D model and gives us exact measurements for precise job scope. Give us a call today and we'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. Attention homeowners, get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. Don't just live in your home, love it with quality kitchens and bathrooms from Special Editions in Rockaway. Our talented design team will work with you from consultation through completion of your cabinetry to ensure your complete satisfaction. Special Editions is a family owned and operated business since 1978. Call to make an appointment to meet our designers and visit our showroom with over 50 beautiful kitchen and bath displays. Let Special Editions transform your space from home to dream home. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? It's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Open Road Mazda of Morristown is your go-to for reliable and affordable vehicles. We offer a wide range of options to match your style and needs. First-time buyers, discover the joy of buying with confidence with our five-day money-back guarantee. Your journey begins here at Open Road Mazda of Morristown. Pizza Pub. Share a great meal with those you care about. Proudly serving the community for over 30 years. Welcome to Deep Wellness Center in Roxbury. We provide preventative and restorative lifelong health solutions and a unique consultative experience, providing essentials for a healthy body both inside and out, using natural methods which allows you to take responsibility for looking and feeling your optimal best. Kitchen Art Cabinetry Showroom in Chester is your one-stop shop for designing and remodeling your home's kitchen. And we are now offering an expanded set. Third down to give Montella cuts back up the middle, and he's over oh. a thousand yards, and he's off to the races. Up in the air, blocked down! Don't be here, wide open net. Too easy right there. Molly Chapman, she'll take off from the wing. That one's good. Webb trying to get the pin! Here we go! Great senior night ceremony here at Lindby Valley High School. A 63 save performance by Casey Connor, the Crimson. And he break his record. Oh, Pinty oh, Edwards oh, wins it. Get to you last year, you get them at home. And if you're also pumped and happy, like. Head up the head tonight on more Sussex. All right, good evening and welcome to William G. Menon Sports Arena here in Morristown, New Jersey for a divisional matchup between the Roxbury Gales and the Gill St. Bernard's Knights. The Hots division known as the Wild Wild West, but right now Gill St. Bernard's is really on a tear starting out the season 4-1-1 one one, while Roxbury might be getting a shot in the arm. A familiar face should be in the crease as they start this season 2-7-1 before we get things rolling with everything out there. We would like to thank our sponsors for today's game. 
This game is brought to you by, well, well, first I have to click on the right set of sponsors and then we can get rolling. That'd be helpful. My Gil St. Bernard's. Why choose Gil St. Bernard's more than just a tagline? Their mission is to provide a balanced, diverse, and secure community that prepares students academically, socially, and ethically for college and a meaningful life. It is a living reflection of who they are and the values that inform their daily interactions. Visit gsbschool.org. Also brought to you by Knights Automotive. That's just a great name. They're a family-owned and operated business for over 40 years, servicing all makes and models in Roxbury Township and surrounding areas. Visit their website at knightsautorepair.com or call and speak with Bailey or Justin to schedule your next service appointment at 973-927-0114. Good luck to Roxbury Gales hockey team. Mary Axelson, looking to list your home? Call Mary Axelson, the 30-year Roxbury resident and realtor. She has volunteered for so many Roxbury teams. You may already know who she is. Call her text Mary at 973-229-8455. Go number 18, go Gales. Huh, number 18, huh? Sounds pretty notorious to me. Uh, thank you to the barn. Roxbury Ice Hockey thanks the barn for their support of their broadcast. Please consider supporting their sponsors. Yeah, you should. Black River Barn is an amazing place to go. I've been going there, honestly, since I was eight years old. That's not part of the read. And a uh, big thank you to Anthony Franco's. Anthony Franco's Real Break Oven Pizza. Now with two great locations over in the northwest New Jersey region, Sparta and Roxbury. There's also one in Wayne, New Jersey. Call Sparta at 973-729-6000 or Roxbury at 973-598. 9500, the perfect mix of restaurant, pizzeria, and home de delivery. And of course, it's getting a little warmer outside as our game time temperature is brought to you by ICS, keeping you warm when it's cold and, or yes, warm when it's cold and cool when it's hot. Go to ICSHVAC.com for all your comfort needs. It's 39 degrees outside here in Morristown, New Jersey, as my name is Zach Smolin, welcoming in my good friend and colleague, David Hashagan. David, great match between these two teams today. Roxbury is not going to be your everyday 2-7-1 team, as a familiar face has appeared on the ice. Yeah, and it could be a big shot in the arm, too. The number 30, Mikey Guadagnino, returns for Roxbury. Went to a different school, didn't quite work out over there, So, but even though he's coming back to the school he was at last year, still had to wait, <clears throat> excuse me, still had to wait those 30 days in the waiting period before he could, was eligible to play. He is now eligible as of today, and that is a big time boost for this Gales team. They've been looking for some help in the net. They've been getting some pretty good performances out of Martinelli and Katz, but Guadagnino is a step up in class, and that could be huge as they get into the middle of the second half of the season here going toward those Haas Cup playoffs. Yeah, Guadagnino and his 31 career games in net for Roxbury over the past two seasons, a .850 save percentage and a 3.96 goals allowed average. Going to be going up against, well, another spectacular goaltender, Luke Jansen, starting out the season 4-1-1 with a 1-5-0 goals allowed and a .933 save percentage. I'm laughing because it sounds like I'm making those numbers up, but I'm certainly not. He's been that good. No, he's been phenomenal for them, coming off a huge game in his last outing. And this Gill team, again, we've talked about the numbers. It hasn't mattered so far this year. They're, they're shorter bench. They're, you know, they're on this great run. They're 4-1-1. One one. They already have three wins and a tie in the division. They're, in, they're pretty much they're, you know, relying on their own destiny here for where they're going to end up in the final half standings going into the playoffs. But, again, if they look past this Roxbury team with their record, they might pay in this one. And I don't think that they're going to look past them too much. I mean, 5-4, they beat them back on December 13th, and that was a game that was tied all the way into the third period. Gill outscored them 3-2 to two at the end. Actually, they were losing by a score of 4-1, to one, and then they were able to make it all the way back. I believe they won that game in overtime. So Gill St. Bernard's, again, a very solid team. They've really erupted this year. Massive improvements from last season, and a lot of it in the scoring department, scoring just under five goals per game. Mm, yeah, no, it, it's been a lot of, some really big-time scorers in this group. You look at guys like, obviously, Julian Tromontano, Porter Clark's had a good year. Trey Sanford has been solid. Michael Ty has jumped onto the scene. So this is a team that's got plenty of scoring all over the ice. Now they got to be able to, again, deal with a different type of goaltender because the scouting report changes with Mikey Guadagnino in net. Yeah, it certainly does, and and this isn't a knock to the Gales. They've had some pretty solid performances, again, from Katz and from Martinelli, but it's resulted, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, right? Six goals allowed per game from this squad, just not cutting it in the team that had been scoring almost four per game, so the offense had been there. Van Zyl, Michael Nelson, who was on the JV squad last year, stepping up. Sean Hardy having a good year. Gavin Barua has nine points on the season as well. So this is a team that can score. They just needed that shore-up part on the defense as Guadagnino looks like 
like he's going to be between the pipes today. And you mentioned, yeah, 30 day waiting period. Can you believe that this has already been a month through this season? No, no. This is <laughs> I feel ridiculous like we just got started. And two goalies, by the way, that are very, very similar, very similar height, very similar build, but very similar the way the way they play the net. They don't play their size, they play their skill. They certainly do. I mean, Jansen, I mean, you see his neck just and his shoulders barely getting over the crossbar, but his quickness, he's kind of like that modern goaltender, right? He's a little yep. bit faster. He's not as big as those old school guys. You could say the same thing about Guadagnino. As it looks like we're just going to drop the puck and get started here. Looks like we are indeed. Van Zyl is ready. Michael Ty is ready. Let's do it here in Morristown within the Haas division and a false start. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, Scarpetti and Nelson jumped the gun a little bit there. They're going to rule Scarpetti the guilty party. And so now he'll have to take the draw himself. So he was guilty and like, you know what? Now you got to face off against Van Zyl. Not anything that anybody wants to do as they tap it back. We've got Roxbury and the Gales going from right to left on your screen in the navy blue and gold with the Roxbury shield and sword on the front of their jerseys. And over from left to right, you will have Gil St. Bernard down there, gray and blue, with the night logo on the front. Here comes Van Zyl, quick shot, and it's denied immediately by Luke Jansen. The notorious RVZ having another incredible season in his junior year. 9, 10, and 19 by far leads the team. Michael Nelson, though, not far behind. He's got 15 total points. Yeah, Michael Nelson's been a real nice surprise for us, at least. I'm sure the, the Kales folks knew what they were getting when he moved up to the varsity. He's been a great support for Ryan Van Zyl and the rest of this offense. He's going to be a huge part of the rest of the season as well. I just remember watching him last year uh, oh. with the JV squad as we get a little wraparound shot, and Guadagnino is able to put a stop to it. Yeah, Nelson was just, I mean, he was one of the best. Him and Cam Guerra last year were like the two best players on that JV team. And, yep. you know, those Roxbury coaching staffs, they knew they were the people on the staff, they knew what they were getting. And, you know, Nelson has been nothing short of electric, four goals and 11 assists. As here comes Gill breaking out of the zone. This is going to be a very tight game all the way through. I expect it to go almost exactly the same as their meeting did a month ago. As they send that one across the nose of the crease and they try to break back in. Touching up on it now, the number nine of Michael Nelson. Nelson knifes his way through the defense. Now over on the right side, past the goal line, right in front. Big stop by Jansen on a sneaky one-timer by A.J. Mancuso. Yeah, and again, it's a feed from Nelson that sets this up. Mancuso cutting in. He's got great burst of speed, too. He's got a great first step that allows him to get to the net faster. But great job there by Jansen being alert. So Luke Jansen, I mean, again, you can lean on him a lot. As a team, a 2.17 goals allowed average, but there's been a couple that have gotten in when he was not inside the net. As they spin around, Mancuso again. This time a soft touch is all he's able to get. This goes through the legs of Hardy, but keeping the zone now is the 24 of Griffin Warsaw. He's a big-time blue line presence as well for Roxbury. It's about a minute and a half into this contest. Three shots on goal coming from the Gales. Jansen has stopped all of them as the high-flying offensive Gill breaks into the zone. Centering feed, one-time shot, and Guadagnino was able to kick that off to the side. Big time save there on the one-timer. Looked like it was a sure goal. Big time stop, though, from the netminder. And that's, again, what we're talking about here. That shot in the arm, you know, these are saves that you can count on him to consistently make, even though he hasn't really been able to play for the past 30 days. Actually, he hasn't been able to play in any games at all. Well, you get a, a key player back, no matter what position they play, it's always going to lead to that burst, right? It, it, it's similar if you, you, you lose a key player to injury. All of a sudden, they come back. You get that extra thing. Like, hey, we got it. We got ourselves a real a good team now. And this is a Roxbury team that has certainly been better than their record. But having Mikey in there is just going to give them a little bit more confidence to be, you know, getting more into the attack. Don't have to commit too far back into defense because you know that you're going to have a goaltender that's going to make a few more saves for you. Yeah, I was looking at Roxbury's record, 2-7-1, getting ready for today because last week it was really all about basketball for me on Garden State Sports. and. Yes. So I look back up, I'm like 2-7-1. Like, it just didn't seem right no. for this team. And I expect them to really turn things around, maybe even get back to 500. But here we go with Gil St. Bernard's and Michael Ty going top shelf on maybe a little bit of rust coming from Guadagnino. It's one nothing. No, that's not rust. That's just a heck of a shot. Watch yes, it this is. from Michael Ty, the number 15. Talk about a player who's been a, a shot in the arm for Gil St. Bernard's. Talk about a player that they have absolutely needed. And he goes just inside, goes to the inside there, and then top corner. That's a, that's almost an impossible shot to stop. Yeah, you're right. Even if you're full chrome right there, you're not making that stop either. So <laughs> certainly no rust being stopped there from Guadagnino. 
As again, everything is Chrome in the future. Here's Van Zyl. Van Zyl centering feed off of Alvin's stick a little too hard. Ty got his stick involved in that play as well. 1-0 for Ty. It's his sixth goal of the season. I believe his first five came in one game, by the way, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, against Vernon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised about that either. Cutting ahead, Gage Martins. And now again, looking to the center, but nobody home this time around. I mean, it's very clear what Roxbury wants to do. They're trying to challenge the middle that Gill's been giving up so far in this game. Another good state ahead, this time by Connor Stark. Stark with no points this season as Van Zyl able to take it away. And now it's flipped up back into the neutral zone. That was the other number seven, by the way. That was Tramontano. Oh, there we oh, go. Yeah. That is Tramontano. My mistake. Yes. Looking over on the wrong side, I'm like, wait a minute. Two teams, one sheet. You know out. what happened? It's the sheet is reversed of where they are currently on the ice because uh, the way that we orient our home and away is. No I'm flip like, yeah, mode. I know Tramontano. Yeah, Tramontano's got a ton of points. Yeah, no flip mode. <laughs> He's oh, got hello. 17 leading the team. He's second amongst all skaters out there on the ice right now. Tramontano, another key weapon. And you know, finally getting a lot of help. But here comes Porter Clark. And Clark, the number two on Gil St. Bernard's. He's a guy that you probably won't see leave the ice too often. Yeah, no, you'll see him on, on all parts of the ice, too. He's a 200-foot player and just a menace to try to defend. He's got eight points, six of those assists. There's Tramontano cutting away. Tramontano flips one up, and Guadagnino is able to put a stop to that one. Nice save there from Guadagnino. And you could hear Coach Benbow and his staff saying, get on him when Tramontano got the puck. That's a player that you cannot give space to. That's the biggest key. He is he, one of those players where you give him any kind of room outside of maybe two feet, Guess what's going to happen? The puck's going in the back of the net. Yeah, you can't give him any space. And a good distributor as well. He's so talented, he pulls defenders in with him. That's why, or rather, a big part of why he's got those eight helpers on the years uh, additionally. There we go with Gavin Barua. Nine points on the year. To Nick Piper. Piper across for Thomas Sanders. Sanders, Rissy head, getting it cut off there by Sanford. Sanford hip checks him into the wall as Gill is forced deep in their own territory. Now from back behind the net, Justin Katz. He's got one goal this season. Over towards the blue line, drawing towards the middle. Flipped up, and Jansen is able to glove it as he makes save number six of the afternoon. Good luck, coming, good luck there coming across the blue line by Barua. Tried to get a few bodies in front to try to get it away from uh, Luke Jansen, but Luke's just so very good at just following the puck, making sure he's center, makes a good save there. Yeah, if you want to beat Jansen, you're either going to have to completely catch him by surprise or put a couple of screens in front. Even from center ice, point blank, it's going to be very hard to get it around the number 35. Another shot right at Jansen, kicked off to the side. Rebound recovered by Hardy, and now the lid put right back on it by Jansen. Again, Luke with a .933 save percentage this season, and his most recent effort was probably his most impressive. Yeah, absolutely. 40 on 41 shots against a Westmore Central team. That is just incredible. We'll see them, by the way, against Chatham tonight. Uh, uh, not here at Menon Arena, but at, over at uh, Sports Care Arena. Here's a shot and another save and denial just on the other side of the post there as Jansen, again, unstoppable so far in the early going. Unstoppable in making stops. There we go. Yes. He's the immovable force. Yes. When they've got that that <laughs> other little cliche that they always have. Yes. But again, cliche is cliche for a reason. 9.41 left in period number one. First of our triple header here. We've got a lot of great hockey coming at you today. And I'm really excited for the Randolph-Mendham game. Randolph hasn't lost yet, but Mendham plays such a systematic style of hockey that I have a feeling they might have a chance of shutting them down. Well, don't forget, Mendham took Chatham to overtime and yeah. almost got the tie against him. So if Randolph decides, uh, yeah, we can get through with about 70% effort tonight, they could be looking at L number one. Yeah, that is, that's a team, the Mendham Minutemen, that nobody can look down upon. Here comes Hardy working ahead, losing his stick, Tramontano, and that's gonna draw a tripping penalty. Yeah, and, and Tramontano knew it as soon as he did because he didn't even try to retrieve his stick. He's like, yeah, I tripped him. <laughs> I think my favorite part about high school hockey is the body language with penalties. A lot of them is just like, ugh. It's just that little bit of frustration oh, yeah. that they've got going in. It's like, yeah, that one's on me. So Tramontano is down two for tripping. And now the Roxbury Gales will have a really good opportunity here to try to tie this one up. Good play by Sean Hardy to draw the penalty, just driving inside. It's, it's like we're just using the pause button down there for music. Yeah, I'm hearing it. Yeah, no fades in and out. Uh, no match of Giacomo's <laughs> down there. Here comes Michael Nelson. Works his way over along the boards, but Porter Clark is right there. As he'll tap one up the boards, gets right back up top for Barua. Barua 
Again, using the side, and a fellow defenseman in Clark looking to rattle it outside, and it'll succeed there as Van Zyl will pick it up over on the right side of your screen. Van Zyl Ooh. takes a thrashing over there in his own zone as it's blasted right back in. Guadagnino watched it go right above his head as it's picked back up by Barua. That was either Scarpati or Whiteley who delivered the massive open ice hit to Van Zyl. I would believe it was Scarpati that was able to get that one on him. Yeah, he turned him completely around. I don't think Van Zyl was expecting to get hit there. Spinning puck back up top. Recovered Van Zyl. Bats it ahead and it's deflected from Scarpati who will shovel it outside of the zone. Roxbury really struggling to keep the zone so far on this power play as 60 seconds have ticked off. Here's Barua with the shot and another denial by Luke Jansen. That's bet. I mean, that's what Roxbury had to do in that situation. You've already lost half your power play. And like you said, Zach, they really haven't had any setup time with the man advantage. So get a shot on goal, force the goalie to hold it up, try to win this draw, and then you can work your offense. Again, this is a guild team that's so much improved from last year. I mean, just look at the way that all phases of the game are clicking. Their special teams has been really good. Obviously, the goaltending's always been there, but the offense is becoming a lot of pressure. And they've got some forwards that, even when they're killing a penalty, can really put a lot of pressure on the other side as they kept the puck over on the Roxbury zone for a little bit. Here's Van Zyl's shot, looks for the deflection in front. Not going to get it. Griffin Warsaw was camped out right in front of Jansen looking for that deflection, but it just could not go. Big reverse hit there by Barua on Clark, but Clark gets right back up and sends it in. Now it's banked over along the family first home care sign, picked back up by Van Zyl, who has not left the ice during this power play. When, is, when do you think the last time they changed these boards, by the way? Uh, I don't know. The last <laughs> time that they painted. Uh, <laughs> Inside here. But listen, I, you know what? I, I really come to love the feel of this rink. Oh, yeah. You feel like you're in old school Jersey hockey, and it's certainly a great place. Uh, and we're incredibly grateful to get to broadcast all these games here on Guard State Sports from Men. And here's Nelson's shot, and Jansen oh, is able to grab it. And Clark taking exception. Now, Clark is, again, not the tallest guy, but he went toe to toe with Griffin Warsaw right there. Well, they both, a couple of uh, Roxbury players there tried to jab that loose from the grip of Luke Jansen. And uh, you take a little jab at a goaltender, someone in the same uniform will come over and say, hey, please don't do that. In, in, those, in somewhat close to those terms. I I'm think sure. that's exactly what they say. They'll be, uh, pardon me, gentlemen, uh, but it appears to me that you've wandered a little too close to my goaltender. Uh, I would politely ask you to back off. <laughs> Here we go back to the mat. I, I can hear them from all the way down there, even with the headset on. Yes. Here we go, set up again with Sean Hardy trying to create chaos in front of the net. Nothing doing as Michael Ty will take it away. They didn't announce anything from the goal, so we don't know about any assists, but Michael Ty has his sixth goal of the season, and that's why it's a 1 0 affair. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. All right, so Scarpati got himself an assist, and Porter Clark had an assist as well. Clark's seventh and Scarpati's second. That's a very good transition there, sir. Well done. We talked about this, didn't we? Like every time that I, that <laughs> one of us says something at a hockey game, it just happens. So this is flipped up and goes away. This happened at the ice fault the other day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a lot of inspired hockey being played on uh, Zach Small and David Hashagen calls lately. Uh, the Jersey Hitmen NCDC team that. You know, just could not shoot their way out of a paper bag sometimes, you know, erupt yes. for nine goals. Yes. And so then right here we get a we get a goal announcement when we need it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Six thirteen left as Van Zyl taking the draw back over to Porter Clark. Clark with six ten remaining on the clock, a one nothing lead for his knights. He'll hang on to it, looking to survey as he gets ready to quarterback this offense. Banks it ahead. As it's picked off by Tramontano and intercepted now by Van Zyl trying to carve his way ahead. Back to Tramontano. Tramontano over to his left, absorbs a hit. Now back up from his knees as this is looped over to the blue line and taken back away by the Gales. Over to Michael Nelson, around an official. Nelson again works to the inside now all the way to his right. Trailing with the puck, takes the shot and Jansen once again is able to collect it. He's 11 for 11 to start off this game. That's much better from Roxbury on that rush. And it all starts with a nice hip check by Ryan Geller. Knocked Tremontano off the puck and then forced the turnover and then leading to that rush. But once again, Luke Jansen is sharp. Not enough bodies in front of the net and a lot of one and dones for Roxbury so far. Yeah, Luke Jansen might very well be the best goaltender 
in this entire conference. And if not, he's certainly yeah. leading the conversation. Here's a big shot that's blocked in front. Nice job by Barua. He really laid his body on the line for that one. Yeah, good play there against Whiteley. And now taken away yet again, Chase Alvin Roxbury. Again, playing very well offensively. I'm a little bit surprised with Gill's offensive output so far in this game with just five shots on goal, but they do have the one score. Well, Gill's okay with playing this game because, of the, again, they're a shorter bench. They want to save legs if they can. So if it doesn't turn into a track meet right away, they're okay with that. If it gets to that in the third, they'll be okay if it keeps at this pace. They did erupt at the end against Roxbury the last time that they played Yep. after trailing by a ton inside of that third period. Now picked up by Ryan Geller, three assists on the year for him. Spinning around Nelson over the blue line. And now Clark will punch it right back in to be handled by Geller. Sending it across to the captain, Barula. Center Van Zyl leaves it behind, hangs on to the puck now. Gets it around and Clark muscles him away from the puck. Van Zyl made a nice move with the puck, but the body could not follow. Good stand up hit by Porter Clark, not intimidating, just held his ground. Clark again, just easily moving around Van Zyl. He is smooth as silk on the ice there. It's popped up onto the glass and now sent right back out by Whiteley. Rush ahead, another shot, and Guadagnino is able to not only deny it, but also send it into a group of seats over on the right side. Sends it into section 13 over to our right. Someone's going to go claim it. The question is, will it be returned? Ah, we'll see. There's a photographer over there as well. Did not oh, it looks like... Oh, it looked like he was going to throw it back on the ice. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. No, please don't. <laughs> he didn't. Calmly return it to the scorer's table, please. That's another thing we saw at the ice fall the other day. That uh, one photographer trying desperately to underhand the puck over the glass. And whew, that, was, that was really tough to watch. <laughs> Underhanding a puck over the glass in a part of the rink that is completely covered by the netting. It was kind of like, you, you ever watch a two-year-old at, at a birthday party with the pinata? And they give him like a <laughs> wiffle bat? And like, no matter what they do, it's, it's not breaking. That's exactly what it was like the other day. Here's a quick little race in. Shot on Jansen, and again, moving over to his left. Luke Jansen just has a knack for smothering the puck. He's almost like a black hole. He'll attract it, but right to his body each and every time. That was a great cut to that by Justin Katz, but a better defensive play, too, by Trey Sanford, who did just enough to keep him away from the net. Roxbury kept the zone, and a little shovel over towards the net. Again, deflected away. 12 for 12, Jansen is to start this contest, and we still have three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in period number one. Another one sent on goal, and again, touched off to the side by Brandon Binder. And now the other direction. Scarpati has an assist over to Ty. Ty behind the net. Look at this kid fly. Oh. Between the legs. Here's Ty again trying to do it all on his own, and he gets sandwiched between a pair of gales and now a takeaway. Sanders lost control. Back in Justin Katz, still in the neutral, now over to Roxbury territory. And that was, I think the gales just got a little too sick of uh, Michael Ty's uh, figure skating that time. <laughs> I think Mr. Piper said that's enough. And I didn't want that as Jansen again able to stop and collect it. Save number 14. There is a new player on Roxbury. It is CJ Loiza wearing the number 35. Yep, saw him actually the other day. He was brought up to the varsity. Big body back there on the blue line. Certainly will help as, oh, I think he, uh, a little uh, skinny with the puck there from Chase Alvin. Had it in his glove. That's, uh, that's unfortunately not allowed. No, they, they don't typically let you do that. Uh, has to stay on the end. That, that would be uh, that would make hockey a lot more sporting. Oh my gosh, you, and then you have no idea who's got it. You kind of put everybody <laughs> in the middle. You have to drop it within a certain number of feet of the goal. Sure, these batteries are placed very precariously near your feet. I can't have you slipping. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Anything for the safety <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> health and of safety. Mr. David Hassigan. Porter Clark lifts it. Well, I don't want to necessarily say health. I mean, I've got, what, like a 32-ounce cherry Coke in front of me from Panda <laughs> Express. So I don't know if health is my main concern, but certainly your safety. As here is a battle for it over on the right side. These two teams, while putting their bodies on the line in this game, hockey not exactly <laughs> the lightest of sports. So here comes Van Zyl. Beautiful cut as he shakes off one defender and sets it over to Barua. Roxbury trailing one to nothing. Thanks to the goal from Michael Ty, the freshman. Oh, oh, big now, hit. big batter over by Michael Nelson. And another physical hit by Alvin. Maybe a little bit of frustration from Roxbury. A lot of shots, no scores. So they send it ahead. Here's Tramontano. Tramontano with Peru. A beautiful pass back. Shot from Whiteley blocked down. And that was Ryan Geller making his presence known. 
Clark again winds a blistering shot and again deflected away by the 16 of Geller. Over in the corner, Gil St. Bernard's looking to double their lead here. Tap pass back over. And a shot from Clark deflected away. And now they can turn the heat up a little bit because the long ice cut is coming up in about 90 seconds. Clark battering it, and they're going to say it went out of play. It did. I it get, did. Yeah, I guess it did go. Oh, did it go inside their bench and bounce yep. back? angled glass over there. That gotcha. last piece behind the bench. So. I was going to say, I'm like, I saw it hit the glass. The deflections makes it all seem a lot closer. Yes. Certainly a much better performance, though, from Roxbury in this first period. They've been skating with Gil St. Bernard's, and now a discussion of where this faceoff will be. It's actually going to go into the Gill end of the zone, which is a little interesting because that part of the bench is – not in either zone, but I guess they must have said it was played out by a Gill player. Yeah, I think that would have to be the case. It would be a Knight chipping it into their own bench. Up top, Griffin Warsaw with a shot and just can't get it to go again with Jansen. Now back for Hardy. Hardy hits the back of the net. Little sharp angle ends up back behind. Hardy again looking for space up top and opts to send it all the way to the other end as Alexis Oliveira challenges for the puck. AJ Mancuso again behind the net. And now taken away from Ty, or rather by Ty. Warsaw. Chops it around. Gets it around a defender now. Here's Hardy. And now another work up ahead by Mancuso. 45 seconds left in period number one. Roxbury desperately trying to get something on the score sheet here. 15 shots, nothing to show for it. Here comes Ty. Ty breaking ahead. Gets around one. Ty has one more man to beat. Ty looks to pass inside and just couldn't quite get it to go to Scarpati. Still time. Scarpati again shot. And the door is slammed shut by Guadagnino. Talk about a shot in the arm. Guadagnino coming up with some big time saves. He's seven for eight. And again on his career, 85%. Save percentage allowing just a tick below four goals per game. Ten seconds left. Paddle along the back of the net. Jansen keeping an eye on the puck with five seconds left to go. Roxbury looking to center it to Van Zyl. They won't be able to get it to him as we will end period number one with a one to nothing lead with Gil St. Bernard's on top. Roxbury with a ton of shots, but again, David, nothing to show for it. Yeah, good offensive performance from Roxbury, just not getting it through, through uh, Luke Jansen at this point, but... Still just a one nothing score line. They've got plenty of positives they can build on going into period number two. Yeah, the Gale's looking good despite the zero on the scoreboard. And Gil St. Bernard's again trying to stay red hot. We'll have more for you after our 15-minute ice cut here on Garden State Sports. All the exciting design possibilities displayed at our 5,000-square-foot showroom located near ShopRite. See our selection of appliances, cabinets, countertops, flooring, hardware, and more. Financing is available. Our experienced team will help bring your vision to life in our design center. Call Kitchen Art Cabinetry for a free estimate and consultation. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. 
I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Hi, I'm Dan from George J. Keller & Sons. My family-owned company has provided superior service to local homeowners since 1980. And based on the strength of our commitment to you and your positive reviews and feedback, we are now a GAF three-star President's Club winner. That's right, one of 30 winners out of 2,600 Master Elite dealers nationwide. Our seasoned pros provide the best service and quality products from beginning to end of your project. Give us a call today for your free estimate. At Autosport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf. Serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. My room is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. Don't just live in your home, love it. With quality kitchens and bathrooms from Special Editions in Rockaway. Our talented design team will work with you from consultation through completion of your cabinetry to ensure your complete satisfaction. Special Editions is a family owned and operated business since 1978. Call to make an appointment to meet our designers and visit our showroom with over 50 beautiful kitchen and bath displays. Let Special Editions transform your space from home to dream home. For all of the perks that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. 
the freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. At Blue Titan Fitness, our team is committed to making our members experience the best it can be and making sure we give you the best hour of your day. We are 100% focused on your fitness, health, and well-being, all while showing you just how fun fitness and training can be. Get in shape, go home safe. Blue Titan Fitness and Self-Defense. Colder temperatures are right around the corner, and Plato's Closet in Ledgewood is stocking up on gently used name brand styles for the winter. Get paid cash for your fuzzy sweaters, warm boots, cute scarves, and all of those cozy staples and statement pieces sitting in your closet. Plato's Closet is the go-to, affordable, sustainable shopping spot for teens and young adults. Stop by Plato's Closet in Ledgewood today. Step-by-step -step painting and general contracting. Your trusted partner for all your home needs. For over two decades, we've brought our clients' visions to life throughout northern New Jersey. Our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results. From painting, bathroom and kitchen renovations, additions, remodeling, and custom faux work, we've got you covered. Our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities. Step-by-step -step painting, building dreams, one project at a time. Majestic Flowers and Gifts, your trusted family-owned and operated florist since 2006. Our loyal customers are always satisfied with our attention to detail and customer service. We serve all of Morris County and offer deliveries for any flower needs. Providing our customers with a variety of flowers from prom flowers to anniversary arrangements, wedding centerpieces, get well soon flowers, funeral flowers, and much more. Next time you're thinking of getting flowers for your loved ones and special occasions, rely on Majestic Flowers and Gifts to provide nothing but the highest quality. For years, it had been the same routine, working all night. Ah, <laughs> those beautiful faces. I wanted more, for me, for them, for our futures. There was this day that something changed, a simple moment of dress up. It opened my eyes. Take charge of your future and go big at CCM. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage, Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. We specialize in roofing and siding. That includes gutters, windows, doors, stone siding, decks, and painting. We also utilize new age technology like drones and 3D modeling. The drones keep our guys safe on the ground with an aerial perspective, and the 3D modeling gives us exact measurements for a precise job scope. Give us a call today. We'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. Attention homeowners. Get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment. Providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure, Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. 
Don't just live in your home, love it. With quality kitchens and bathrooms from Special Editions in Rockaway. Our talented design team will work with you from consultation through completion of your cabinetry to ensure your complete satisfaction. Special Editions is a family-owned and operated business since 1978. Call to make an appointment to meet our designers and visit our showroom with over 50 beautiful kitchen and bath displays. Let Special Editions transform your space from home to dream home. All right, welcome back here. Roxbury Gill St. Bernard's one nothing the Knights on top of the Gales in this Haas Division class, as we would like to thank all of our sponsors real quick. First and foremost, ICS, and when it's uh, keeping you hot, or rather keeping it never keeps you hot, keeps you cold when it's hot, warm when it's cold, go to ICSHVAC.com for all your comfort needs right now in Morristown, and it's 39 degrees. And again, go to ICSHVAC.com for all of your comfort needs. We'd like to thank our friends over at well, again, needing to click on the right ad uh, folder. I shouldn't have them all at once. I know that we're sponsored by the wonderful people at Gill St. Bernard's. Why choose Gill St. Bernard's more than just a tagline? It's their mission to provide a balanced, diverse, and secure community that prepares students academically, socially, and ethically for college and a meaningful life. It is a living reflection of who they are and the values that inform their daily interactions. Visit gsbschool.org. And, of course, tonight's automotive, Mary Axelson, the Black River Barn, and Anthony Franco's, all the wonderful sponsors from the Roxbury Gales as we're getting started here in period number two. 15 shots on goal, but nothing to show for it for Roxbury. But again, their offense is a ticking time bomb, if nothing else. They have a lot of good options. Certainly do. Just haven't quite gotten it going so far, but they've also hit a brick wall in Luke Jansen. But I'll tell you what, Mikey Guadagnino, he's not showing much ring rust. He's done a great job so far for the Gales, keeping them in this game. Yeah, I certainly misspoke when I even just mildly suggested that he had any sort of rust. He is <laughs> on fire so far today. And again, going up against Luke Jansen. I mean, this is a dream goaltending matchup. And is now working it right back in, Chase Alvin. Luke Jansen, most goals he's allowed in the game was four, as this one's denied here by Jansen again. And besides that, hasn't allowed any more than two in any other contest. Yeah, no, he's been a brilliant goaltender. We said the numbers before. Oh, that's a whiff on a hit. But again, he's getting some good help in front as well. The biggest thing that Gil St. Burns has improved on this year is defensively. They've really helped him out in front. Yeah, they've done an excellent job. Not a lot of really tough stops there for Jansen. All shots that Jansen can certainly stop. Again, we see we say this a lot about young goaltenders, and especially the more talented ones here. But he's one of those guys, if he sees it, he can stop it. Another break in, Roxbury. Again, just trying to get a feel on how to solve this Gil St. Bernard's defensive puzzle. This isn't a team that's going to wear down easily like a lot of other teams with short benches. This is a well-conditioned unit. As here comes Porter Clark, works to the inside and now slapped off and away by Griffin Warsaw. Warsaw has been a really nice defensive piece getting called up from the junior varsity from last year. Also saw a little bit of varsity time. But now part of the everyday lineup. And a long drift ahead, and no icing as it's snapped up here by Mancuso. Mancuso, as a man goes down, and Hardy should be sent to the box for two minutes on the tripping call. And that's just an unfortunate one. That wasn't even trying to play the puck. Wrong place, wrong time. It looks like it's actually they're going to they're going to give it to man uh, to Mancuso here. They give it to Mancuso. Wow, I'm a little surprised there. I thought yeah. Hardy was the one that was closer by, but it is going to be AJ Mancuso, the 23. So for the first time today, Gil St. Bernard's will find themselves on the power play. Their special teams killed off a penalty back in period number one. And, of course, all of our power plays brought to you by Open Road Mazda of Morristown. A big thank you to them for their support. That's right. And new car drivers, listen up. Open Road Mazda of Morristown has your bag. Discover affordable, dependable vehicles for less than $15,000. Backed by a rock-solid five-day money-back guarantee. Drive with confidence. Drive with Open Road Mazda of Morristown. Check our link below for more details or check them out over on Ridgedale Ave. Tap over to the side, and Scarpetti caught a little bit of the ice monster that time as he fell on his way to receiving the puck. Yeah, a little toe pick there. That happens to everybody. Unfortunately, he did it when he was about to lace one toward net. Scarpati's got an assist so far in this game. It's the second of the season, third total point. Van Zyl trying to put some pressure on up top, and if anybody can do it for this Gale squad, it's him. Just with some sheer speed and skill. The 18 works in front of Porter Clark, now ahead of Tramontano. Tramontano skates over to the corner with a man on. Tramontano, a little feed over to the faceoff circle. Now back up top. Scarpati over to the high slot, takes a shot, and this does hit the net, but it hits the side of it. Roxbury trying to rattle it out of the zone. 
And instead, given the business, here's his shot, and Guado Nino again with a nice glove save. Tell you what, these two goaltenders would not be very popular at a teddy bear toss. I don't think they would be. <laughs> By the way, did you see the one in Hershey the other day? No, I didn't. 74,599 bears were thrown onto the ice in Hershey, wow. Pennsylvania. Took about an, an hour, I think, to get everything cleared out of there. You know what? The, the only place they'd be least popular is a bouquet toss at a wedding. <laughs> I certainly wanted to. First off, I'd be like, why are the guys in the suits over there? And second of all, why do you have your full goaltending gear? <laughs> Just catch the bouquet in the mist. <laughs> I always thought that if I invited, like, Martin Brodeur to a wedding, he would show up in his goaltending gear. <laughs> I mean, just it, the goalies. He's you ever got see more the, class than that. Come no, no, now. it's not a class thing. It's just, you know what, this, this is a comparison I make. You remember when you are a little kid and you're, you saw your teacher outside of school and it was really weird? Yes. Like, it didn't make any sense? Yes. It's kind of like that. Like, you, you rarely see goaltenders without their goaltending gear unless you know them personally. Fair point. So, you know, just to not jar everybody around. And I, I didn't mean just specifically Martin Brodeur. It could be any <laughs> any goaltender. So here we go. Laced over by the red line. And now work with Porter Clark. Spinning the puck behind him. This gets wrapped around the boards and a beautiful pass to the other side. And now this will trail up and away. And they're calling for Jansen to go outside of the crease a little bit. Instead, he's going to jet it to the far side board to Trey Sanford. Roxbury doing a really nice job on this penalty kill. One last little rush from Ty here. Little touch up top, banked off the boards by Sanford, and that'll kill it off. So the open road monster of Morristown power play has expired. Both teams are 0 for 1. Here's Nelson looking in on the sheet today. Three on one developing. Nelson in the middle, one time shot. Jansen picks it up off the rebound again. Luke Jansen is a special talent over there in gray and blue. Three on one and makes two big saves on a couple of dangerous shooters as well. And that's a big just mark of his talent right there. Jansen will rarely even give up a rebound, but he knew exactly how to play that one. Made it very manageable for himself. Tap back in the zone as Warsaw will flip it. Send it ahead. Mancuso, fresh out of the box, will chase after it in the zone. Mancuso back behind the net, looking for options. Has a man on, evades the hit. Ends up with the puck over near the boards, and now it's taken out of there by Ty. Ty looking to fly through as it's shipped over the blue line by his teammate. So got a little help there from Scarpati. Now again, Mancuso with Chase Alvin next to him as he'll enter the zone, flipping it forward. And this Gil St. Bernard's defense is really tightened up here on the Roxbury Gales. Yes, there was the power play, but at the same time, Roxbury getting very few passing or shooting opportunities. Banked off to the side to Brad Matthews. First time we've said the name of the number 48. As Henry Smith will gather. Van Zyl putting a lot of pressure on. Getting a little help from Warsaw. As Warsaw will flip it up and out of the zone. This will drift all the way over to Gil St. Bernard's territory. Doesn't have enough juice for icing. And no, I guess they're going to keep the whistles down. Thought for sure they were going to give him that one. Waved it off. I guess they thought that uh, Gil wasn't in as much pursuit of the puck as they wanted to be. Yeah, I guess so. That's down back to the middle. Porter Clark, one on one. He scores! What a move by Porter Clark. Guadagnino couldn't quite make it all the way over to a stick side, and Clark buries his third of the season. It's two to nothing, Gil. What a goal from Gill here, and what a move by Porter Clark. Gets the feet across here, and it's just in time to poke it through. Back forehand, backhand, and that's a beautiful goal. Fantastic from Gill. That's what they can do at any time. This offense, again, small in number, big in ability. And that's a great goal there for Gill, 2-0. And neither goal, by the way, Guadagnino could do anything about, really. That, that's what we call a right stick deke on the controller right there. Beautiful <laughs> move there by Porter Clark. And that's a defenseman, by the way. He has two points today, and now he has 10 total on the season. The second player on Gill St. Bernard's to reach that mark. The other, of course, being Tremontano, who's got himself 17. He's in pursuit of a score. Clark, beautiful shove. And that's another thing. We talk about the goaltenders. Playing bigger, that's what Porter Clark does as well. Oh, yeah, he's not afraid of contact. Sent back across for Whiteley. Yeah, Porter Clark, he doesn't have the size, but his style of play reminds me a lot of Chris Pronger. Really good two-way defender. It's hard to say because of the size difference, but he's very physical. So Tramontano now 9-9, nine nine goals and assists. 
as he's able to pick that one up. And Henry Smith with his second assist on the season. He's got two points. Guadagnino has done really well in net, has made 10 saves on 12 shots, and just a couple of really nice breaks there by Gill against him. Alvin rips one, and this one goes high and wide. Now taking Van Zyl. Not a lot of shots on goal for Van Zyl today. They've really paid special attention to the number 18 as well. Oh, that was their best opportunity there, but it just squirted by Nick Piper. Long shot deflected high and into the netting out of play. Good rep by Geller. And a really good sequence there from Roxbury. And here's the thing, Roxbury, you can argue, has been the better team in terms of overall play. They've done a good job of kind of keeping shots away from Guadagnino. They've gotten more shots on goal. They just can't find a way past Luke Jansen at the moment. I mean, and that's not exactly a unique problem. No. Last game again, as you mentioned, 40 saves for Luke Jansen. As they're working with it again, and a little bit of a deflection. Back up top, ripping the shot in tonight again by Jansen. And that 40 was nearly a career high. He had stopped 41 against Mahoha on January 14th of 2023 last year. Yeah, that was Loizo with a good look from up top. Another nice save by Jansen. Again, just not quite enough traffic from Roxbury in front. He's able to see a lot of these shots coming in from distance. Now off the glass and taken away, C.J. Loizu. Warsaw hanging on, Scarpatti on top of him. Now over to Nelson, clears the blue line. Nelson with space inside, and this is off the paddle of Jansen. Jansen, cool, calm, and collected. He doesn't care if there's somebody charging right at him. He's got all the confidence in the world. Van Zyl works around, looks for the wraparound, and the door slams shut again by Jansen. And Van Zyl, I mean, he looked like he had played that perfectly, but Jansen was having nothing of it. it, it Roxbury is going to have to differentiate their shots, try those, those attempts from behind the net, and maybe look for a feed from back there, because anything he's seeing, he's stopping. So if you try to get that, those one-timers from behind the net, those are the kind of ones that goaltenders don't like because they don't know where it's headed. And again, that was a good play by Van Zyl, but Jansen had that one read the entire way. He knew exactly where he needed to be. He's able to get the pads on it. Van Zyl working with it again. He needs to get going if Roxbury can come back in this one. Trailing just by two, Van Zyl with some smooth moves. Now he's down, still somehow got it on net, recovered by Nelson. Nelson back with it, near side corner, looking for options. Sends it right back up top. Kept in by Loizu, and sent netward, but again intercepted, and here come the Knights. Flipped up, beautiful pass to Scarpatti. Scarpatti just lost control and a pair of Gales in his way, but not without a couple of bruises. Gill again for a short bench team, very fast, very physical, certainly well conditioned by the coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely. Coach De Silva does a great job with this group, took over full responsibilities this year. And he's got his boys ready for every situation. He knows how to play with the group that he's got, and that's the biggest hope you can have from a coach. And I'll tell you what, he's got him going in a good groove right now. Long shot, Guadagnino. So we'll stop it down in the butterfly with about six minutes left to go in period number two. 22 shots on goal for the Roxbury Gales to just 12 for Gil St. Bernard's and just four for Gil St. Bernard's here in the second period. Racing ahead, Mancuso. Mancuso to the right of the defender, and Porter Clark again just got enough stick on it to disrupt that pass. Great job from Clark. Perfect positioning. Stops the two-on-one there. Tramontano with an assist in this game. Keeps the puck on the blade. Now over to Whiteley. Whiteley over to the middle. Here's a point-blank shot attempt, and Guadagnino is able to keep his focus and kick it away. Oh, Rob's billing in on that one, and he's going to be wanting that one back. Big time stop, Mikey Guadagnino. It looked like Roxbury, had, or rather Gil St. Bernard's, had all the time in the world to take that shot. As here's another attempt. As Well, I guess Gil just heard me announce how many shots they had, trying to make up for it. Now pulled off to the side. Huge collision over in the corner as a big-time hit delivered by Geller. Able to get right back up is Whiteley. Whiteley tries to distribute to the top as Alexis Oliveira with a nice play to shovel it ahead. Here comes Hardy. Hardy has six goals on the season. You can see why. Great shot, and Jansen again gets the body in front. Another big stop from Jansen. It's, that was a great move in by Hardy, but nothing doing. Luke Jansen now 63 saves in his last two games. Here comes Whiteley, and he pounds one towards the net, and Guadagnino was able to seal the edge. 
I don't think they're going to give him a shot on that. Might have hit a body in front before. Porter Clark, long jet over to the cat corner. And now for Chase Alvin. Looks to the middle, Van Zyl. Puck rolling over to the far side now as Clark takes a baseball swing at it and ends up popping up. And back over by the blue line for Nelson. Nelson funnels over to the corner. And C.J. Loizo looked like he was eyeing the bench for a change and they're not going to get one. Here comes Clark. Porter Clark, two points today. Ten on the season, has it intercepted and offside it looks like. Where are the Knights? As our teams are arriving for game number two, another crazy game in the Haas coming up as Park takes on Montville. So that'll be an intriguing game. As a lot of, a lot of Haas action this, uh, this upcoming week. Oh, for sure. As Park Regional and Montville at fourth and third respectively inside of the Haas. If Park Regional can win that game though, they would leapfrog Montville, I believe, due to winning percentage. It would go to two and two in the division. Montville would drop down to two and three as the Mustangs trying to turn things around. They're plus three in the goal differential department, plus six are Park Regional. Now taken over back behind the net and handled by Van Zyl. Van Zyl gets rid of it for Nelson. Nelson leading the way on the team with 11 assists on the year. As it's kicked away and now taken by Ty. Here comes Ty, pass a little bit too far and again, Pasture, that's that route one pass you're talking about. It was good. Now they get it off again, and Guadagnino is able to get the pad on it. Long shot off the blocker. And that stretch pass, again, just a little too much heat on it. They were breaking the speed limit. Yeah, just a hair too much on that one as it <laughs> Luke, Luke Jansen just got that little flip one and decides I'm going to hold it, and then did the flash with the club, just holding on to the puck. As, uh, it's like... Getting a little extra stretch in there is Porter Clark. He's done a lot of skating out there today. Oh, he certainly has. And I mean, and he doesn't come off the ice either. I believe that's Clark down there. I oh, know Clark just came on, but certainly it's been a decent pace. And the faster this game gets, the better it is for Roxbury going forward. Here's another delivery and turned around by Baru. He'll keep it inside the zone. Three minutes left to go here in period number two with 2 nothing. Gil St. Bernard's lead. The goal this period coming from Porter Clark, his third of the season. Now trying to create some chaos by Jansen. Jansen sealing off the edge. And again, Luke just, he's a tremendous kid as well. Yeah. We got to interview him earlier in the season. He got great personality. And exactly what you want from your goaltender. You know what he is too? He's calm. He's just calm he in net. And that's something that you see from Guadagnino as well. The best goaltenders are the ones that are just like, okay, I made it safe. We're good to go. Move on. It's, you want that ice cool delivery. He also likes to have fun with it, too. It's having fun now. Roxbury trying to work towards the net. And Porter Clark is able to snap it away. Those cats in there again. He's had a couple of good rushes, just haven't been able to get the finished product. Justin Katz again was a standout on the JV squad last year for Roxbury. Now through the neutral zone. Tramontano over to open ice. Trying to get one around Barua, who stands him up, standing in front. As Barua will send it over to center ice. The 21. Dips up top. Clark working on him. Look at that height difference between these two. Yeah. And Clark able to snap it away from him. Clark with some serious skill out there on the ice. As he's got a little help from Whiteley. Clark faked the pass. Good move. Draws all three defenders. Whiteley shot. And this is kicked away. Porter Clark drew all three Gales over to the corner with him to facilitate that one-timer. Now another one from downtown and denied again by Guadagnino. And that's where having a player like Porter Clark is such an asset to your team because you, he deserves he deserves attention, and he gets it. And here's the thing. You've got other players on the ice that, for you that can deposit the puck in the back of the net. He had Whiteley there who got maybe a little too close to Guadagnino. That's why that one didn't find pay dirt. But that's the kind of stuff that if you're Roxbury, you can't have happen because you will pay for those. Park Regional really getting everything ready. We see a whole two cases of Gatorade, so dehydration won't be an issue for the team. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. They got some good colors there, too. Well, they've got the, the what Twitter's been calling the medicinal one, which is the yellow Gatorade because it's the original. <laughs> and then the orange one, I think the orange one was, uh, I don't know, maybe for revitalization because yes. it appears to have citrus in it. One minute left to go. Ty, a little centering feed taken away as it was poked loose by Hardy. Here comes Hardy trying to turn on the Jets, but gets lodged up by Ty. Good job by Ty switching from offense to defense right after the turnover. Good transition there from the forward to shut down Hardy. And 
just kind of stop that attempt, allowed his other players to get back into defensive position as this goes down for an icing. Yeah, Clark last to touch it, 40.6 left here in period number two. As the shot's starting to get a little bit closer now, Roxbury's got eight shots on goal this period. And honestly, this song indicative of Luke Jansen's season. It, it is so easy. <laughs> yeah. Here's another block down, or at least he makes it look easy. It certainly it's not, especially within this division. All the big-time scores that you see, I mean, yeah, you, you know, Van Zyl out here now, you think of your Chase Olszewski's, your Matt Trafari's, half Cole Riley's. West, half of Westmore Central. Yeah, <laughs> almost, the, yeah almost the entire Wolfpack. <laughs> and, yeah, he stood up to almost all of them. Gill, only with one loss this season. Now shot from up top, and it's stopped by Guadagnino. As he's able to stand him up, make the save off the shoulder. Hardy looking for one more rush. Can't quite collect it as Ty was drifting in on him. And now Scarpatti got the glove on. Clark with it again. He's going to rifle it around, and that will close things out in period number two. So this time Gill had the power play. They could not score on the open road Mazda of Morristown power play. They do score a goal, though, at even strength from Porter Clark as Gil St. Bernard's is able to take 10 shots going up against Roxbury's eight. When we come back, we'll have the final five minutes, or rather 15 minutes of action after the five-minute break in the hot division between the Roxbury Gales and the Gil St. Bernard's Knights right here on Garden State Sports. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? It's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Open Road Mazda of Morristown is your go-to for reliable and affordable vehicles. We offer a wide range of options to match your style and needs. First-time buyers, discover the joy of buying with confidence with our five-day money-back guarantee. Your journey begins here at Open Road Mazda of Morristown. Pizza Pub. Share a great meal with those you care about. Proudly serving the community for over 30 years. Welcome to Deep Wellness Center in Roxbury. We provide preventative and restorative lifelong health solutions and a unique consultative experience, providing essentials for a healthy body both inside and out, using natural methods which allows you to take responsibility for looking and feeling your optimal best. Kitchen Art Cabinetry Showroom in Chester is your one-stop shop for designing and remodeling your home's kitchen, and we are now offering an expanded selection of appliances. Come view all the exciting design possibilities displayed at our 5,000 square foot showroom located near ShopRite. See our selection of appliances, cabinets, countertops, flooring, hardware and more. Financing is available. Our experienced team will help bring your vision to life in our design center. Call Kitchen Art Cabinetry for a free estimate and consultation. Welcome to the arena. 
Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. What a great song to start off, period number three here at William G. Men- Men in Sports Arena in Morristown, New Jersey. Gil St. Bernard's on top in this Haas Division clash, two to nothing on the Roxbury Gales as Gil St. Bernard's are trying to kiss Roxbury goodnight and have the same man enter in this contest for the second time this season. Zach Smolin and David Hashagen hanging out with you. Gill has just been so impressive with the way that they've played this game. They're forcing Roxbury, who, yes, is leading in shots, but I'd argue that Roxbury is only taking the shots that Gill is allowing them to take. This night's defense has been almost impenetrable as a moated fort. Yeah, no, they've, they've really done a nice job keeping the shots to the, from long range, keeping them from deep. I mean, that's because, and that starts, though, with Luke Jansen because he stopped all the ones that were kind of in the front of him. He makes those stops. Okay, we got to shoot from deep. And Gill's like, all right, you can shoot from there all day long. So we'll see what adjustments Coach Benbow makes because Roxbury needs to get a couple of goals real quick. Yeah, the drawbridge is up right now with Jansen in there. Nothing getting past him. It's 23 for 23. Another shot in Guadagnino. And a little bit of trouble, but he is able to seal it between the stick and the pad there as he makes... Save number 17. And it's so good to see him back, too, as a key yeah. piece, especially Roxbury last year. You know, putting together a winning record. They were kind of there. Again, they were a wild and streaky team, but he was really an anchor over there for them. And now to see him back in the crease, I mean, the fortunes will certainly start to turn around for this Gale squad with number 30 back. It's just kind of a tough game. You know, it's a tough matchup for him to come back against because Gill is so talented. But against much of this Haas division with Guadagnino back, I like the chances of Roxbury in a lot of those games that they have left on the schedule. So are they going to get back to 500? Maybe not, but they can certainly get themselves into the, at minimum, the Haas Cup playoffs. Big hit there in the corner. Yeah, they certainly can. As another shot comes, Guadagnino again hits it off to the side as Ty will send it over to Clark. Long shot, looks for the deflection, score! How about Michael Scarpati cleaning it up down low? I believe Clark should get the assist and Scarpati, his second goal of the season. It's three to nothing. And this one was just a wild bouncing puck in front. Poor Clark sends it out there. It's kept alive by Ty, who gets it back to Clark. Long shot, and oh, that's a weird redirection. It kind of hits the inside of the of the uh, kind of the, the part of the shaft of the stick that's kind of closest to Scarpati, and it took a weird hop off of it and goes into the net off the redirection. So it will belong to Scarpati from Clark and Ty. That's what it should be. It should be. Listed as that, so that was a really solid goal right there. And again, Scarpati, not a lot of goals this year, but able to have the awareness to clean that one up down low. Which is, I mean, and those are going to start to come as well. Scarpati's a really talented skater, and this one goes behind the net. And, you know, we talk about Tremontano and Clark, rightfully so. They've had big years. Sanford kind of burst onto the scene last year, but Scarpati's been the constant the last couple of seasons for this Gill team, and he puts the puck in the back of the net a relatively good amount. It just hasn't happened this year so far. You wonder if he gets one or two, whether that's going to jumpstart his season. I mean, it certainly could. As here we go racing ahead, I believe that's Clark getting entangled there. And now push back off to the side. We look at Roxbury's upcoming schedule. I mean, while it doesn't really get a lot easier, 
as they'll have Westmore Central uh, coming up in their next game. Oof. And then they've got Park Regional and then Vernon, Mountain Lakes, and Westmore Central again. They've got the Wolfpack twice in 20 days. That is going to be certainly difficult, but if you can get at least a cup, two, maybe three wins out of those other games, you might be able to get, you know, find yourself in the good enough position there. The issue with Roxbury is that they've played a lot of their divisional games already. They have a lot of out-of-division games later in the season. Now they send it right back up top. The Gales trying to recover. They trail by three. They've allowed Gil St. Bernard's to score exactly once in each period. And they fail to cash in on their only open road Mazda of Morristown power play. A skate now from behind the net. Barua. Nice little drop pass over to Oliviera. Oliviera Van Zyl. Was that Sanford out there or Scarpati? No, it was Scarpati. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, the, the official didn't see it right. I think he saw the one at the end. Oh, Van Zyl again with a good deep move, but the puck just rolled off a little too early. And again, twos and sevens also very looking very similar when they're tucked in. Oh, the, when they're tucked in and when they're moving very quickly and flailing in front of a net. But it was Scarpati, that is for certain. Oh, hello. Another big hit, and we're going to have another penalty here. Van Zyl really took the business end of that one. That was kind of an awkward, it was almost like they, the two players turned into a bit of a tornado there. Van Zyl kind of got locked up with Clark, and Clark just accelerated them down toward the ice, and once he did that, that made him liable for two minutes. The only thing left after that tornado is to look for Toto. Yeah. Here he goes right back into the box. It's Porter Clark for holding two minutes. Yeah, you could argue both players maybe had a, a hold of each other. I'm sure that's what Clark would argue, but I think it's the right call there from the officials. No, I, I absolutely agree. And, and again, the way that Van Zyl was down as we have a rifling shot from Barua, and he's got some high velocity. So Porter Clark, this is, he's now tied his career, or rather season high, in points for one game. He had three assists against Vernon. How about this for Clark? He has had exactly 17 points in each of his last two seasons, but they came very differently. He had seven goals and 10 assists in 21-22, and in 22-23, three goals and 14 helpers. You gotta love consistency, consistency though from a blue liner, one that can score and get the assists. That's so helpful to say, hey, we can take some of the burden off our forwards. Here we go to the middle, and again, don't forget to tune in right after the conclusion of this matchup. As we got a shot score. Well, forget about what's coming up next. You got some entertainment going on right now. I believe that's Scarpati again. And it's now four to nothing. Well, th there's no doubt that they're gonna read his number wrong this time. Well, and this is one that probably, this is probably the only one so far that Guadagnino would want back as he gets a piece of this one, but it's a turnover in the neutral zone. Scarpati comes in, uses the screen, and he got a piece of that Guadagnino. was just off of his angles so that when he made that save, it actually went into the corner of the net instead of wide. And that's a big insurance goal now, shorthanded for the Knights, and they are running away here. Scarpani has now tripled his goal total from one now up to three on the season. Can get another one. Here's Scarpati off to the side. And, yeah, like you mentioned, he's been consistent at, from the forward position. Double-digit goals in each of the last two seasons. They are making up, by the way, on that third goal. That was a correction to Scarpati. There we go. And that's an open road Mazda of Morristown power play goal. Actually, a shorthanded goal. Was it a short? Yeah, it was a shorthanded goal. That's right. They should. Oh, uh, oh my goodness! The blade of the stick just came flying off. And frustrated there is Ty. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing really you can do there, as Luke Jansen can do it all in the crease. Yeah, you're right. That was a shorthanded goal. No, I was thinking a lot about the the PWHL though, where they let the person out of the box afterward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the reason why Ty is frustrated. Number one, that's probably his goal score. Number two, he probably paid for that stick himself. So that's another 250 <laughs> down the drain. As that one, uh, I would say die here, but almost a lucky, luckily, though, that that didn't do more damage because that played right up and hit Van Zyl right in the face. But that's why they wear the full cages at this level, folks, is stuff like that can happen. And honestly, I'm a big fan of that, too. I, it was, oh, it's yeah. funny. I was showing my, my girlfriend's been getting really into hockey. So I showed her the movie Miracle the other day, and I was looking, I was like, man, none of these guys have visors on their helmets. No. And, and the goaltenders, it was just a mask, too. Oh, yeah, barely. Bare I was like, what? Barely any protection. What is, I'm like, this is a sheet of paper. So the shorty is to Scarpati. 
Well, Ty can't be too upset. I mean, Ty's got three points today. A couple of assists and a goal. Michael Nelson. Roxbury trying to make sure that they at least get something on the board here against Jansen. Shot wide of the net. Big bounce off the backside board. And Jansen again able to kick it off. Warsaw. Penalty killed off now. 0 for 2 are Roxbury. Here's Porter Clark. Porter Clark. Beautiful stretch pass ahead to him. Here's the number two. Works around. And he scores! Porter Clark season high. Four points this season. It's 5 to nothing. Oh, what a grab there by Clark. And Tramontano does a great job here. He holds onto this puck long enough that he forces the player out of position. The lone defense and turned him to, forced him to turn around once he did. Feed it to Clark. And that's a brilliant move. And this is exactly mirroring what, mirroring what we saw the first time these two teams met, Zach. Close game through two. And then Gill starts to pull away here in the, in the third period. They've done a tremendous job here in the third frame. Just keep an eye out. Porter Clark's career high for points in the game is five. He had two goals and three assists back on December 21st of 2022 in a game against Morris Catholic. He's one point away. And, you know, they've got ten minutes left in this game to try to come up with it. Tell you what, the... Uh... <laughs> player of the game nominees are now getting much more difficult. Well, there's so many big time performances here from the Skill St. Bernard squad. It, it might actually come down to who doesn't have a t-shirt yet. Yeah, potentially. So Clark doing Porter Clark things out there on the ice as he escaped the box and immediately scored. Now looking for his fifth point. Little distribution inside, oh. score! And Porter Clark! has tied his career high as he gives that one over to Julian Tramontano, his 10th goal this season. It's six to nothing. Zach, watch this. This is disgusting from Tramontano. What a feed from Clark. But then watch this move from the number seven in gray. Sends it in front and oh, forget about it. That is ridiculous. And a big time goal again has got Gil St. Berners now in full control. So Porter Clark with Tied for his best performance in his four-year varsity career. And Julian Tramontano has reached the double-digit mark in goals yet again. Huge night. And oh, by the way, Luke Jansen has 27 saves. Yeah, he's got the shutout working at the moment. Yeah, not too bad for him today. No, not terrible. Yeah, and he really did well, especially in that first period. Things could have gotten ugly a couple of times. He was really under duress. Let's see if they give another assist on that play, or is it just Porter Clark? It is just Clark. Luke Jansen, the sophomore. Don't believe he had... No, he had two shutouts last year. They were back-to-back. -back. One against Park Regional and, and another against Morris Catholic. In which his team scored... 19 goals between those two games. Jeez. Here we go with Ty. Batted away by Van Zyl. Another shot across. And again, this could be a huge game for Gill. Especially within this division. They can go up to 4-0-1 as this is chipped up in the air. Almost a little friendly fire that time to get it around Jansen. But fortunately, it went too high and against the glass. Hand in the air. Delayed penalty coming up. And it looks like it's going against Gill, this time for a hold. As Scarpati is going to go in, and we go on another open road Mazda of Morristown power play. Yeah, another tie up there, and once again, just a little bit over aggressive there. One of the Gill players at the time, Scarpati, but they scored a shorthanded goal last time they were shorthanded, so who knows? Maybe they like the open road Mazda power play, just not on their side. Maybe, although it was Scarpati that scored the shorthanded goal. Yes. Off the draw, Barua. Tries to send one, and immediately denied by Whiteley. Barua recovers right off the shot from the ankle. Back to the 21, and he lost control with 12 seconds ticked off of the power play time. And again, Open Road Monster of Mordstown, your trusted source for new and exciting rides, whether you're into a small and sporty car like the legendary Miata, or need a full-size family mover like the powerful CX-90. Mazda offers a wide range of vehicles to match your style and needs. First time buyers explore their affordable and used cars and hit the road in a Mazda that suits your every adventure. Visit the link below for more details. 0 for 3, and a, or rather 0 for 2, trying to prevent going 0 for 3. And have given up the shorthanded goal. Whiteley makes it look easy, picks their pocket, and all the way back on defense is CJ Loizu. 
He was fresh off a chain, so made that a little bit easier for the Gales. 7-10 left in period number three. A 6 nothing deficit to look for a deflection, oh. and Jansen gets his helmet knocked off. Yeah, a little inadvertent collision there with the netminder, and hopefully he's all right. He's going to take his time here to get back and going. And here's the thing, Gill does not have a backup netminder, so you hope that that is nothing serious for Jansen, who's looking to shake it off here. Nothing intentional there, just crashing the net was Roxbury, trying to get anything out of this game, and so far, nothing. Yeah, Warsaw just had a little bit too much momentum going in again. Uh, not too happy about it, where the game, or rather, where the Knights on that play. But I think everybody realized afterward, like, hey, you know, he certainly wasn't trying to charge down Luke Jansen. No, but the referees are still going to give the penalty to him. They're going to give him two minutes here, probably for goaltender interference. Yeah, and I think that's probably the right call, too, yeah. because, you know, penalties aren't just because of intent, right? Exactly. It's because of the action as well. So we're exactly. going to play four on four for exactly one minute. Gill with a six to nothing lead over the Roxbury Gales right now, and I mean, very if if not for the Wolfpack, you could say that this is probably the best team in the division. It might not even be particularly close. I mean, it's really you know Gill and Westmore Central right now at the top. They're certainly the tier one of this Haas division. Well, I'll tell you what. The uh, oh hello friendly fire as uh, that one takes out a. Hein Van Style takes a puck up high, but you, you you look at this and that you look down the down the schedule, that uh, that matchup between Gill and Wes Morris, the rematch, could be honestly who decides who the regular season champion is. I probably will. I mean, so if this game, if the score holds, or even if you know Roxbury piles on a couple more goals but can't eclipse six, yeah, right now they'd be again undefeated in the division, four zero and one. With a handful of division games left to play. They'll have Montville on the 11th, West Morris again, then Montville. So they still have some division games left, but can certainly really take charge here. And don't forget that one is against West Morris. So they both have that tie in common. Oh, hello. Big hit there in the corner. Van Zyl takes one up high. Yeah, and Van Zyl got hit with some friendly fire before, too. So we're hoping that the number 18 is okay. He's a little slow to get up. And now penalties galore here as we're on the, well, we were on the Gill power play for a second, and now Clark will go in for tripping. They're going to call it a trip, although it could have been a couple of things there. As Clark got a little squirrely on his, in his skating that time and caught Van Zyl up high, who's had a rough day. And here's the big thing with the way Gill has played tonight. Who have we not said a lot in the offense? Van Zyl, Barua, you know, we've had Nelson who's had a couple of good looks, but a couple of the big names have been held pretty quiet here tonight. So this is what Gill likes to do. Just smother you, frustrate you, force them to play their game, and then hit you on the counterattack. Let's see what happens here with Clark inside the penalty box. It's the second time he's been put in there, but he's really the heart and soul of this defense. This is probably Roxbury's best chance as Jansen will glove that one. Of course, heart and soul of the defense along with Luke Jansen. The Luke Chance out there in full effect. I mean, he's he's really been something else out here today, playing some seriously inspired hockey. Good face off, top shelf, bar down score. Sean Hardy is seventh of the season. And again, I don't even know how he had space to flip that one up and over Jansen's head, but it's six to one. I think Jansen might have gotten a piece of this off the shoulder. Let's take a look, it's right off the draw. And it's a good, clean win here over to Hardy at the side of the circle. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Jansen gets a piece of it. It kind of hits up by his neck uh, off the side of the mask and in. So that's an unfortunate one for Luke Jansen, but it's a nice goal for Sean Hardy and way for Roxbury to get at least one out of this game. So Jansen will have to wait a little bit longer to get his first shot out of the season. He's got 28 saves today on 29 shots, though. So, again, not too bad. Coming in a 4-4 four and four right off the faceoff, too. Here's Ty, surrounded by Gales. Looking to brush it in the middle of the Scarpati. And now this will bang off the glass and ring back behind the net for Barua. We've got a hand in the air and clearing out of the zone. Might be a high stick call or? Nope, offside and Ty didn't clear the zone. I don't know how he didn't hear three people yelling off. Yeah, I don't think so but, either. Uh, <laughs> they'll go all the way down because of that. And I know you want to forecheck check and you want to kind of get under the other team's skin, but there's time and a place. As Ty was a little over aggressive that time, and, you know Ty. It's it, it, and with a lot of these players on Gill, it, it's it's easy to forget that a lot of them are underclassmen. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and it feels like we've called a lot of these kids' names forever, but there are certainly some underclassmen in here, him being one of them. And it's just part of the learning curve as well. Scarpati trying to weave through the defense. The puck will continue to advance over to the corner. And getting around the back for Ryan Geller again. We've got Montville and Park Regional coming up after this contest right here in Garden State Sports. Another Haas Division class. Back over the blue line again, taken away. As Gill trying to kill off another penalty here. Back over in the neutral zone, Scarpati with under five minutes left to go in this contest. A five goal lead for Gill St. Bernard's. And this game going a lot differently than the first time that they played the Gales. Here's Van Zyl. Good to see him back up on the ice and skating well. Van Zyl over to the middle. Shot from Alvin, and it's recovered away and batted over towards the blue line. Now the 22 of Blennon. Blennon over on his left. Little backhand, and he's stopped there by Warsaw. Gets picked up there by Loizo. Now a challenge for it in front of the Gales bench. There are four total players over there. Two Knights, two Gales. And the sword wielding, well, actually, really, both of them would be sword wielding, wouldn't they be? <laughs> Taking one, it out. One with a lance, I believe. Yeah, I think the knights, they've got the, uh, yeah, they've got the jousting lance. That's cool. It makes yes. me want to watch a knight's tale. That might be what I do when I get home. It's been too long without Heath Ledger. Clark out of the penalty box. What a move, but Warsaw right in there to follow it up there as he was able to beat Barua initially. Whiteley working on Alvin. Lannon cuts him off, and now it's chipped right back in the zone onside. Long shot, and this one goes around Guadagnino. Guadagnino. There we go, like the El Nino. Yes. Put, the little, uh, put the little mark over the end I did on my uh, sheet, but didn't read it. Here we go <laughs> again with a long shot, and this goes along, or rather hits off the board. Chip back up towards the blue line. Here's Clark. Clark trying to set a career high here of points, and well, he was certainly going for it there. Didn't miss by much on that attempt. Now battle for it again. Here's Whiteley. Whiteley draws in some defenders. Pass across. Brennan Binder sends one on net. And a rebound snap right back up by the 80 of Henry Smith. Binder with it again by the blue line. Under three minutes left to go. 6-1 kill lead as Binder takes the business end of a hit there from Michael Nelson. Oh, and now hello. another big hit on Clark. Barua with a big hit. Yeah, he's kind of had enough of all of uh, Clark's antics in today's game. Yes, like his scoring and assisting and such. Oh, well, of course, and his superb defense. Yes. Another one sent on net and batting off to the side there. No save for Jansen, but did a nice job clearing it away from his office space. Van Zyl, and he's just got nowhere to go. They're really paying a lot of extra attention to the junior wearing the number 18. We've seen this from Gill all year long. They find those one or two primary points of contact and just shut them down. And if they can't move the puck to anywhere else, they're not effective. And we're seeing this from a lot of teams now. This is the middle part of the season, and we're starting to see these teams grow into their systems. The beginning of the year was all about learning to skate together. And I mean, look at Mountain League's Boot, and perfect example, the way that they've grown as a defensive powerhouse already to start this year. So, you know, we're going to get to see them on Wednesday, but they've been a lot of fun to watch, and it's going to be cool to see how these teams grow into the year. Nelson. Puts his back. Deflection. They look to go up high. As a good series coming in there from the Roxbury Gales. But Hardy just couldn't quite finish. Went a little too high. Had a good look there. And Chase Alvin on the back post. Tried to redirect it. But good look. But nothing happening right now for the Gales. It's just been their kind of night. That's kind of night for them. Yeah, it's been tough. Guadagnino asked to come back in against one of, the, one of the better scoring teams in the entire MCSS IHL and a team that's certainly clicking on all cylinders. Also worth noting, the Gales, this is only their seventh game of the season. As this is game number 11 for Roxbury. So they rifle it in. Jansen will hold it behind the net with 65 seconds left to go. Hung on to Sanford. And now here's Tramontano. Tramontano to Scarpati inside the zone. Clean entry. That's another thing about this skill team, too. You know, the short bench, you'd imagine that they'd be getting tired, but I haven't really just the one offside call against them all game. Very clean hockey being played by the guys out there in gray and blue. It's all about that pace in the first two periods. If the pace in the first two periods is relatively slow, then guess what happens? They're going to be nice and fresh for the third, but if they get into a track meet with a team, then they can they start slowing down. We saw that against West Mars, but they just got excellent goaltending that night. Yeah, they certainly did. That 1-1 tie 
Very consequential right now in that Haas division. Both teams with identical records within the division could change here if Gill hanging on for the final 18 seconds. Back up top for Warsaw. Little tap pass. And this will go over behind the net. Sent back through. And all the way to the opposite side corner. Seven seconds left to go. There's going to be an icing whistle. So we'll probably have just the one more face-off, barring shenanigans. Because not quite barring mishaps. No. Right here. It would be quite the mishap if there were five goals in six seconds. Yeah, that would be, I mean, oh my goodness. That Could would you be, imagine? I don't think that's actually physically possible. I, I really I would don't. Lose, no, I don't think so either. I would definitely lose my voice, that's for sure. Yes. By the way, uh, Gil St. Bernard's with this five-goal victory uh, in first place in the Haas division. Because they would go ahead by winning percentage over Westmore Central at 4-0-1. So Gil St. Bernard's find themselves on top of the Haas Mountain right now. An impressive 6-1 victory here against a tough Roxbury squad, spoiling Michael Guadagnino's return. Yeah, big-time effort from Gil. And it's not quite destiny in their own hands because Westmore is still sitting there. But right now it's in their control to do what they want to do. And another big-time win backstopped by... A great effort from Luke Jansen. And you see him talking there with Guadagnino. I believe they are former or current teammates in terms of the uh, club game. Yeah, and, and, you know, a lot of respect between a lot of the goaltenders here. Luke Jansen, a spectacular night with 29 saves, but your Blue Nail Exteriors player of the game has got to go to Porter Clark. I mean, he ties a career high. He ends up with five points on the game. He has three assists and two goals, so the... Defender wearing the number two. Porter Clark is your player of the game. You can go at Garden State Sports. The name of the social media page finally changed on Instagram. So at Garden State Sports, you can check out the interview right after this contest. But for now, final score, Gill 6, Roxbury 1. And for all of us involved in the broadcast, we got the wonderful Grace Scanlon to my left, pushing all the buttons as the producer. Mr. David Hashtag and running color camera. My name is Zach Small. And remind you, as always, to stay frosty. We'll see you in a few minutes for Montville and Park Regional. We'll see you next time. As they send that one across the nose of the crease and they try to break back in. Touching up on it now, the number nine of Michael Nelson. Nelson knifes his way through the defense. Now over on the right side, past the goal line, right in front. Big stop by Jansen on a sneaky one-timer by A.J. Mancusberry. It's about a minute and a half into this contest. Three shots on goal coming from the Gales. Jansen has stopped all of them as the high-flying offensive Gill breaks into the zone. Centering feed, one-time shot, and Guadagnino was able to kick that off to the side. Big-time save there on the one-timer. Looked like it was a sure goal. Big-time stop, though, from the netminder. It was really all about basketball for me on Garden State Sports. And yes. so I look back up, I'm like 2-7-1. and one. It just didn't seem right no. for this team. And I expect them to really turn things around, maybe even get back to 500. But here we go with Gil St. Bernard's and Michael Ty going top shelf on maybe a little bit of rust coming from Guadagnino. It's one nothing. The pinata. Go. As they send that one, Barry. It was really all about basketball for me on Garden State, the pinata. And they give him like a <laughs> wiffle bat. And like, no matter what thing to show for it, here comes Ty. Ty breaking ahead. Gets around one. Ty has one more man to beat. The boards by Sanford, and that'll kill it off. So the open road monster of Morristown power play has expired. Both teams are 0 for 1. Here's Nelson looking in on the sheet today. Three on one developing. Nelson in the middle. One time shot. Jansen picks it up off the rebound again. Luke Jansen. Off. I guess they thought that uh, in as much pursuit of the puck as they wanted to be. Yeah, I guess so. That's down back to the middle. Porter Clark. One on one. He scores. What a move by Porter Clark. Guadagnino couldn't quite make it all the way over to his stick side. And Clark buries it. And now taken by Tom. Ty, here comes Ty, pass a little bit too far, and again, actually that's that route one pass you're talking about, it was good, now they get it off again, and Guadagnino is able to get the pad on it. Long shot off the blocker. 
And that stretch pass, again, just a little too much heat on it. They were breaking the speed limit. Certainly can, as another shot comes. Guadagnino again hits it off to the side as Ty will send it over to Clark. Long shot, looks for the deflection, score! How about Michael Scarpati cleaning it up down low? I believe Clark should get the assist and Scarpati, his second goal of the season, it's three to nothing. Or get the assist. That's so helpful to say, hey, we can take some of the burden off our forwards. Here we go to the middle, and again, don't forget to tune in right after the conclusion of this matchup as we got a shot score! Well, forget about what's coming up next. You got some entertainment going on right now. I believe that was Scarpetti again. Short-handed goal. That's right.